Hey there guys, today I want to talk to you a little bit about what I think is the biggest ripoff in the sport fishing industry, especially for folks like us here in the Northwest who spend a lot of time wading in rivers, and that is waders. Now I have owned many, many pairs of waders over the years, um, and all of them eventually leak. That is, that is one constant. Uh, it doesn't matter if I spent $700 on them or I spent $100 on them, they all leaked. And this includes brands like Orvis, Sims, USIA, Frog Togs. I've tried all of them and they all leak and they all leak in relatively short order. And uh, it's a very frustrating thing because you invest a lot of money in these things and they just seem to fail on you constantly. And in fact, it's, it's become such a constant that everybody kind of expects them to not last more than two or three seasons. Now, shopping for waders is absolutely a nightmare. Because if you go on and read reviews, you'll find people who say that they've had their waders for 20 years and it's never leaked. And you'll find people who bought those exact same waders and say they leaked on the first trip. And so it's very frustrating to find any kind of consistency. Uh, there are certain brands and models that have better reputations and certain companies that have better reputations for honoring their warranties. But with companies changing ownership constantly, it's very, very challenging and concerning to make an informed purchase. But for me, one of the things that really blows my mind is just the overall lack of durability in these waders. So these are my Orvis Pros. I bought these in 2020 in the fall. It's the fall of 2022 now. So these got about 60 days on the water. I spent about 30 days in the year in my waders. Um, I'm much nicer to my waders now that I don't live on the west slope of the Cascades because we have far less blackberry here than um, on the west slope of the Cascades. And it was much harder to uh, keep your waders from leaking. And I don't blame waders uh, quality if they leak due to pinholes from blackberry thorns and things like that. I'm talking about like catastrophic fabric failure, which is what happened with these. Um, it's very common, especially with me, because I have a short inseam. I'm 29, 30 on the leg length, uh, that I, I have a little bit of extra material uh, on my legs. And because of that, and I walk long distances when I fish, uh, the fabric will rub on itself and I'll get these large holes will develop and then once that starts the fabric just gets brittle and it just opens up and you can get fairly large holes fairly rapidly even on a single day out on the water just walking from point to point and so these six hundred dollar waders lasted two years uh probably about 60 trips so it's ten dollars a day they lasted that's what it cost me to stay dry that's that's pretty unacceptable it's pretty poor and this type of failure um, has been the most common failure for me. So I've tried the USIA heavy duty waders. They did the exact same thing on the legs. Um, my wife's uh, Sims Freestones right here, and she fishes far less than I do. Um, you know, she probably wore these less than 20 or 30 times, also got a similar wear, uh, right? Where the two legs come together. Um, that's also from that movement back and forth. It, it just starts to thin out the material and uh, it breaks open. Now, I can patch this absolutely. It's not a problem and I can probably squeeze another year out of these. Uh, but once they start doing that, I just know it's going to be a pretty rapid decline. And if I'm on a big trip where it matters uh, to stay dry all day, I want to be able to stay in the water all day. I really want uh, waders I know that are going to perform. That being said, uh, my Sims G3s that I owned prior to these orbs lasted well over 100 trips. So you do the math on that. It's probably sub $5 uh, a trip to uh, stay dry, which is getting a little more reasonable. But what really shocks me is, you know, most of these high-end waders, you know, the Sims G3s are three-layer Gore-Tex. Um, all these other companies are using their own uh, types of fabrics, usually that are obviously waterproof but breathable as well so that you don't get too clammy in them. Uh, you know, it just seems to be relatively accepted that, you know, you, three to four years, if you spend 30 plus days on the water, three to four years is the maximum lifespan of a wader. 
and you shouldn't really expect to get much more out of that and if you do you're just very fortunate. I do store all my waders inside where it's cool and dry. I do a good job of keeping them clean. I try to take care of them. Uh, but what's interesting to me is I want to contrast that with my experience with my kayak fishing dry suits. Now, obviously there's some subtle differences in terms of uh, requirements from these two garments. But the main thing I want to point out is that when I wear my kayak fishing dry suits, I'm pedaling my kayak, I'm making lots of movement, I'm jigging, casting. It's a, it's a very active form of fishing. I might be paddling. So it has all the same opportunities for that rub wear, that rub thinning, but it just never happens. It's, it's never happened on any of my dry suits. And I spend far more time uh, in my dry suits than I do in my waders. And this is the, the Hudson from Mustang Survival. Prior to this, I owned the Emperor from Level 6. And prior to that, I owned Kokatat. And, and none of those did I ever have an issue with rub and holes. And it makes one wonder because this is a, this for, exa for example on the Mustang is a BP Marine Spec. It's a three layer breathable uh, abrasion resistant fabric. So it's very similar to wader fabric. It serves the same purpose to keep you dry, uh, to let moisture perspiration from your body exit. It doesn't feel any hotter than my waders. And somehow magically this material uh, can survive three to five times you know, the number of uses that uh, I get out of my waders. So it's very interesting to me that this suit costs about $1,000. So it's a little more than a high-end pair of waders, but the durability is exceptional. Uh, it lasts for a very long time. And it makes one wonder, are they really building in uh, lack of durability into waders in order to force people to buy more? I mean, it, it seems that way to me personally. I feel like they literally could make a much more bulletproof wader. I mean, a dry suit's a lot more material, which is part of what leads to the higher cost because it covers the entire body. Um, it's very strange to me. Even my wife's uh, very inexpensive Kokatat Hydrus, which she's had for, for over five years. This is a very thin material, has lasted, far outlasted her Sims, which she uses far less. Um, and this thing costs $300. It's one of their, their cheaper, lower end dry suits. So it does make me think that the, the waiter industry could do a little better in terms of producing a durable, reliable product. Um, you know, that being said, you know, there are some companies that have a good reputation for honoring their warranties on their waders and those expensive waders uh, might pay for themselves in the long run in terms of customer service. But even with really well-respected uh, manufacturers like Sims, you know, I, I worked at, at Sportsman's Warehouse and North 40 Outfitters. We sold Sims waders. Uh, you know, it was sometimes hit or miss whether or not um, a customer could get them to honor warranty on waders. Um, it's a challenging thing for these businesses to honor all these uh, waiter claims because, you know, waiters do just get beat up. And I, you know, if I stick a, a thorn through it or I cut, catch my waiters on something and cut them, you know, that's my fault, my own. That's not the manufacturer's fault. But when I get wear because they cut their waders in a way that causes them to rub or they don't uh, seal their seams as well, that's definitely on them. And that's more common uh, of sort of catastrophic failures for me is these design issues or manufacturing issues. I can usually repair, uh, you know, small tears and pinholes. That's easy with just some aqua seal. So, it's very challenging. You know, I know Sims, it's under new ownership now, so who knows? And Patagonia, I know, does uh, do a pretty exceptional job of repairing and replacing waders that fail. But I personally just can't uh, bring myself to support that company and their anti-hatchery views. But it does make me think that uh, we could do better 
And uh, I would really like to see some of these dry suit companies producing fishing waders and see if they last a little bit longer than waders do because they uh, definitely are not as durable. Anyways, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Do you think it's better in the long run to just buy mid-price waders and hope for the one or two years out of them and then it's economical or do you really feel like you should invest in the high-end waders and uh, hopefully get that longer outcome? It doesn't seem to be guaranteed. I've, I've, I've bought plenty of super high-end waders that have failed relatively quickly and I've bought lots of low-end waders that fail very quickly most of the time on the first or second trip. Mid-price waders, it always seems to be a bit of a gamble. So I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know down below and uh, I'll get back to you. All right, I'll see you next time. Just remember, fish smarter, not harder. Bye, guys.